So you're probably already aware Adobe have released a beta version of Photoshop that contains a piece of AI software called Generative Fill. I'm going to talk about this new tool in this video now and how I've been using it to improve my workflow. Generative Fill, it's an AI tool in Photoshop which has been doing some amazing things. I'm sure you already know about it. I'm not going to go into the technical aspects of this new tool in Photoshop. There are plenty of other videos on the internet all about this tool. What I want to do is talk about how I have used this software to improve my macro photography workflow. This new Generative Fill tool is only available in the beta versions of Photoshop. So if you'll come to your Creative Cloud, come to your apps, in here, you'll see your Photoshop, which is usually up to date. If we come to the sidebar on the left here, we have beta apps. In here, you will find Photoshop beta. And for reference, my version that I am currently using is version 24.6.0. And what I've mostly been using the generative fill for is to create the full screen crop for my images for Instagram. So let me just show you how I would go about this previously. And I'm going to do this very quickly, so it is going to be a mess. So here we have the image from one of our previous videos. This is a Fidipeus Carolinus, and it's a 12 image photo stack. What I like to do is I like to crop my images to 4x5 or 16 to 9 depending on if I'm doing an image post or if I'm posting a reel on Instagram. Generally this is the crop you're going to get if you don't mess around with editing the image. You can get a close-up crop. I don't like that crop. I like to show the whole spider. So what I would do in this case is just increase my crop so until the edges of the crop touch the image edges. Then I would slide my spider into position, click OK. And then from this point, it's up to you what you want to do. You can select the top part of the image here. We can copy that to a new layer. And then what we can do is stretch that up. It's pretty obvious what you're doing there. Most people, yeah, 99% of people ain't going to notice that's been stretched. Let me do the bottom part because it's going to be very obvious when you do the bottom part that it's been stretched. This is the quick and dirty way of changing the image from landscape to portrait just to post on Instagram. The other thing you could do is you could use a background layer that is just a colour. So let me just do that now. Come to a solid colour. I'm going to move that below. Let me just move these up. I'm going to move that below my main layer. Double click on it and then we can click on one of the yellows or say the oranges. And then that's another way of being able to post it on Instagram so you have your spider in full view, full crop, but you're also filling the screen for Instagram. Another way you could do it is to allow the computer to generate some content. So if I select this bottom layer here and I can come to edit, we can do a content aware fill. And I'm not gonna mess around with it because this isn't about content aware fill, but that's the result you get from content aware fill. It's a little bit better than stretching it. But let me show you now the new generative fill within Photoshop. This thing is absolutely fantastic. What we're going to do is we are going to select the top part and we're going to have a small overlap. I'm then going to also select the bottom part. Again, a small overlap of pixels. And then we're going to click on generative fill. For this particular procedure, you don't put any prompts in. You just click generate. And we will allow the computer to process the image. What it's doing is it's sending the image up to the Adobe Cloud. It's analyzing the image. It's going to generate a background for us and then bring it back down to our computer. And there you go. Much better result than just stretching out your pixels. Now, there are some down points to the, this generative fill. What I have noticed, if you've got, well, it's not going to do it on this image, but it's a clean image, but if you've got a, a noisy image, it doesn't generate the noise to match your image. So you might notice a, a slight difference. But if you're only posting it to Instagram, then you're going to perfectly get away with that. And that looks absolutely fantastic. Let me show you another image. So this image here is of the same spider, but this is a 24 image stack handheld and I'm ready to post this to Instagram now. So again, I'm going to come over to my crop tool. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to adjust my crop so that we're getting all the spider in shot. Move my spider's eyes to the rule of thirds. I'm going to click OK. We're then going to select the top layer. Again, having a little bit of overlap, 
shift and click and select the bottom layer. Again, bit of an overlap. And then click on generative fill and generate. And again, that's going to send that image up to the cloud. It's going to analyze the, the image and then it's going to bring down our result. And there is our result. Absolutely fantastic. So let's look at the top part. Top part. It's good. Um, you do get like a slight line across there. You just take a healing brush tool and select where to copy from. And then I'm just going to clean up. And I spent a couple of minutes just doing that clean up because you can see a slight border. Now, unfortunately, there is a difference with the texture of the image. So if you come back to the original image, you'll have the nice grain that you have naturally within a photo. And the generated part, it's got like this, got like these 45 degree type lines, very, very faint. See, I seriously doubt you're going to be able to see it on the YouTube video. I will try to zoom in on the actual image to see if I can show you that. But again, if you're posting to Instagram, you're not going to see that. No one's going to see that scrolling on their phone. But what I want to do is point out this down here. The generative fill has actually rendered in the rest of the leaf that is out of focus. Let me just turn that on and off to show you. Here's where our image ends, and here is the rest of our image. It has actually generated the rest of the leaf in and put it out of focus, and that is absolutely fantastic. When we come to the generative fill here, we do have three options. We come down to the variations. We can have a look at the different variations. That one's not as good. Let me just move down so we can see. There we go. Actually, I like the third one because it's darker. You can see there, look, it's not so distracting. And if you don't like any of these three here, you can click on generate again to generate another set of three images. And you just pick the best one that you like. Now, if you save this file as a PNG, all those variations will be saved in your PNG, but it will increase your file size. So once I've found the one I like, I usually just go ahead and delete the rest of those to keep my file sizes low. So that is one way I've been using the new generative filter in my workflow. So this next example is a common fly and I photographed this the other night. This is a 39 image handheld stack and what I want to do is look at this area down here where the stacking software got a bit confused. I'm, again I'm handheld so I'm moving around slightly and it's caused this weird like artifacting down here. Now normally I'd either crop it out or just leave it in. Um, these type of artifacts are some of that are standard within a stack, but I want to up my game a bit. I don't want these artifacts in my images anymore. So I'm going to select this area. And another thing I like about this generative fill is you don't have to be very precise with your selection. You just have to just loosely select. You can see that's not very accurate, but I am going to generate a fill and we'll allow this to process it there we go look at that that is absolutely fantastic it really is now this here what i'm going to do now is i just want to show you the um the problems that are with this generative film i'm just going to increase the brightness so you can see it if you move moving you can see the difference in the pattern this area here is the natural noise and grain from the image this area here is the generative image so there are those type of issues. Now, of course, I can go in there now and I can clone the noise and grain over the image. But like I said, if you're posting that there, even if I zoom in, if I post that on Instagram, hardly anyone is going to notice it like that. So you can get away with it. If your end target is Instagram, I'd probably just post it like it is. Since this will probably go to my website, then I will go in there and I will replicate the texture of the noise just to make it match it a little bit better we can again come in here with our healing brush tool and just blend it just a little bit better that has saved me at least 10 to 15 minutes of cloning and duplication to remove that artifact in that image now i'm sure there's going to be people out there going this is bad image generation is bad but let me just be completely frank with you Everything I have shown you in this video, I can do without generative fill. It just takes me longer. For instance, fixing that branch down the bottom there, I could easily do that, but it might take me 10 or 15 minutes. Whereas with generative fill, it's able to do it within 15 seconds. That is the difference. Are people going to abuse this? Probably. Are people going to add items in rather than just fixing issues? Most definitely, yes. Are people going to try and pass off generative images as photography? Yes, they are. But 
I have a certain integrity where if I do a certain amount of work, I will tell you if it's a composited image or not. Stuff like this I consider is just fixing. It's still photography in my opinion. And I will post this image as a photo on my social media. But it's up to you as to how far you deem to go before a photo doesn't become a photo. Let's open up the comments below and discuss this. How much editing on an image do you think is allowed when it comes to calling your image a photo and not a composite, let me know in the comments below. For me, fixing issues like that, correcting white balance, correcting colours, removing dirt and grain and stuff like that, that's all okay. Adding elements in, such as if I add in some texture on top or add in some leaves on top, that in my opinion is then a composite. But if I'm just doing it to fill the screen for Instagram, then I think that is perfectly okay. But again, let me know in the comments what you think. This new generative fill from Adobe is absolutely fantastic for changing your picture orientation from landscape to portrait or from portrait to landscape. It does a fantastic job at generating the borders. And because our subject is mostly in the middle of the frame, because that's where our lenses are like the sharpest, I think it's okay to use it for that. And again, to fix things like stacking issues, I think this is gonna be an absolute game changer. Are you using generative fill to fix your stacking issues? Let me know in the comments below if you are. It's either scary stuff or exciting stuff. For me, it's exciting stuff. It's just another tool to help me clean up my images. But that's where I shall leave this video. My name's Stuart Wood. I wanna thank you for getting to the end of this video. And again, as always, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.